Hey everyone, Jared here, and I wanted to do just a little bit of a quick vlog. Uh, first off, I noticed that it's a little bit dark in here. I don't have the best lighting. I don't have a studio. This apartment really isn't conducive to uh, making videos like this, so it probably is going to get a little bit darker as the time goes on, depending on how long this uh, vlog is. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up over uh, what you can expect uh, for, let's say, like the first half of the year. I'm working away on Saturn reviews as always. Uh, I've got another, uh, I think I got like three more done already in the pipeline on YouTube. Uh, and I've got another six that I'm currently uh, working on. Uh, so that should be okay. We should be good for that. Dragon Quest, I've got a couple of weeks left, but I want to, I'm going to, this weekend, I have to record it some more because I want to get at least two more ahead. So for Dragon Quest X, that'll continue, the Let's Play of Dragon Quest X with Cranberry. Uh, what else? Uh, for the Retro Wednesdays, uh, what I'm doing is pretty much, I don't know if you've noticed the theme, but it's been arcade time over the last uh, oof, last couple of months, actually, have been uh, arcade time. I've been tackling a lot of Neo Geo games. Uh, now we're moving on in. You saw your first Atomus Wave game yesterday. And uh, I'm going to continue with that for, well, that was the first one, was this week. And then I have seven more weeks worth of Atomus Wave content. Uh, I've got a pretty cool PGM, the Poly Game Master. I got the PGM too, I negotiated and I got three games coming in for that. So I'm going to do, uh, probably like I did for the Atomus Wave, I'll do an overview of the uh, arcade hardware. Then I'll review the three games that I got. There were only like five games or so released on that platform. So I'll try and get my hands on the other two games, but not sure. What I'm really trying to negotiate right now is to get a Poly Game Master, period. The original first one. And um, I'd like to get a lot of games for that with it so that, again, I could keep going with the arcade hardware. Now, there are a couple of things uh, that I haven't covered. There's the CPS-3 system from Capcom. I have that in all... Uh, Damn it. I don't remember if it's five or six games that were released on that. There were the three... Okay, so there were the two JoJo games, the three Street Fighter 3 games, and Red Earth, I think is what it was called. So six games, I guess. Uh, so I've got that. I have it dark soft modded. Uh, what essentially that means, I'll explain it all in the video, but basically what it allows you to do is to remove the suicide cartridge. And again, I'll, I'll go into all details, but long story short, the motherboard came with little cartridges that have a suicide battery in them. Once that battery is dead, the cartridge is, is, is useless, it's dead. So what you can do is you can get Dark Softs, this is uh, an individual uh, online, that uh, can make you a proprietary cart that allows, that doesn't die, it, it stays on forever, and then you can just load the games, because this is the way it works, you have a CD thing with it, and you load it through the system. But with, with the damn little cartridges, it's such a pain in the ass, because you have to constantly change the batteries inside. So this solves that problem, so you don't need to do that anymore. And I mean, they're the real games, you're just loading them into the system, okay? Um, and I, I own all of that, so that you can look forward to that. That'll be six other reviews that uh, I'll keep going if I don't have enough time uh, to acquire the PGM-1. Because it seems kind of silly to do PGM-2 before I tackle PGM-1. At least that's the way I look at it. So that would give me another buffer of like six weeks. I could, you know, to, to negotiate some more things and to get stuff shipped out. It doesn't just, you know, come here instantly. Um, what else? From that, oh yes, uh, there's the Dark Soft modded CPS2 hardware. Now that I gotta look into, um, and I'm going to look into that and see what I can uh, what I can do. I don't have the soldering skills necessary to do it myself, so I'm gonna see if I can um, if I can negotiate with them to actually send me the unit. I'll pay, of course, for all of this, but uh, I don't know exactly how this works. I don't know if it comes preloaded with all the games or how, how exactly that works. But again, with the CPS2 boards, those are the big ones. I did a, a video on, uh, what was it, uh, not Marvel vs. Capcom, it was, uh, I think it was X-Men vs. Street Fighter, I think. And uh, I explained that there's a battery inside and you have to change a battery, otherwise if it goes out, you can never use the game again. Today, they have methods of phoenixing it, bringing it back from the dead, by changing the ROMs inside. So, 
it, like whatever. But the thing is that uh, with Darksoft, I believe I, I haven't looked into this. I like I said I'm going to, but I, I think um, you can just get the one board and it'll play all the games through that one board. It's original arcade hardware. The original games just being loaded on to this one. Uh, particular giant cartridge so you don't need to constantly change you don't need to constantly uh, upgrade the batteries and things of that nature but again I gotta look into it I don't have all the details of exactly how it works uh, but I will definitely be looking into that because if that's something I could do then I could theoretically review all of the CPS2 games for you guys as well which uh, I believe there are enough games there that would take us all the way into next year uh, which gives of course in between all of this, I'm still trying to acquire more Neo Geo games uh, because, well, I love the Neo Geo and I would love to keep going with that. But what I wanted to know from you guys, are, are you okay with that? Does that sound like a good idea? I really want to ask the client, the customer, what are they looking for? I just figured that I could do something different this year instead of what everyone else does with looking at Sega Genesis, um, uh, Master System, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, all of those different systems, I figured this would be a different, you know, something unique for you guys that very few other people actually have. Now I had someone uh, leave a comment on uh, reviewing like a Multicade. A Multicade is basically a little box that has a JAMA connection that you would connect into your arcade cab and it would have like say, uh, I don't know, like 600 games on it, 500 games on it, 100 games on it. Uh, obviously that's all emulated, it's essentially a PC on a chip uh, that allows you to play all these ROMs. With the other stuff that I'm talking about, like with Darksoft, it's the original arcade hardware. You're simply taking the original games and keeping them on the storage on the actual unit. So for example, like with the CPS3, those are the real games. You're just loading them. It's simply a mechanism so that the games don't die. That's pretty much all it is. Not emulation whatsoever. Now, um, with, with these sort of uh, multi-carts though, or uh, multi-cades, they are. It's 100% emulation. And I don't mind doing a review of that, but I don't want to review the games on a multi-cade because that's not indicative of the actual uh, games themselves. So like, for example, if I were to review, say, like a Marvel vs. Capcom on a multi-cade, as opposed to the CPS2, you're going to have slowdowns, uh, there might be frame rate issues, there might be uh, sound issues. <clears throat> there could be all kinds of different issues, whereas with the CPS2, it's the, it's the actual hardware, it's the real deal, it's the original arcade game. So, um, yeah, you guys let me know what you want. I mean, if that's not what you want, I personally, I thought it would be kind of original because very few people have YouTube channels um, that you know go into arcade hardware and arcade games there are dedicated ones but I thought you know I've got a lot of fans that enjoy a lot of different retro stuff and these are all retro games it's just that you may not have actually had the opportunity to play the original arcade ones and I thought that would be kinda cool so let me know what you think about that uh, if you would rather I not do that uh, if you'd rather that I do focus in on uh, console-based, strictly console-based retro games, uh, let me know. Uh, I do have quite a few things already in the pipeline for the arcade stuff, so, uh, you know, bear with me. It would take me time to transition over to console. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know if it would be a full year, but it would definitely be, you know, maybe half the year would be dedicated to arcade stuff. Everything's going to depend on that dark, soft um, arcade board. Because if it works the way I envision it, then then we could, yeah, we could cover, like, it'd be a staggering amount of games that we would be able to uh, to cover for the CPS2, because it was a lot of great games released on that platform. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's what I really wanted to talk to you guys about. I'm going to keep going with the Mario Maker. I might miss a week or two here, uh, here or there, because I'm, I'm busy, but... Uh, the staples, which have always been the Retro Wednesday, the Dragon Quest X Let's Play, and the Saturn Day, those three features are going to continue throughout. I'm going to be trying to work with Steven to get uh, some sort of schedule or frequency to Canadian gamers and or Nintendo fanboys. Those are our two podcasts that we sort of alternate between. So I'm going to see if I can uh, touch base with him and see if we can sort of, you know, say like, okay, this day we're going to record the... Uh, record the podcast and we can go from there. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know if this sounds like, uh, you know, an interesting schedule for you. If you guys like to, you know, keep watching these things. I, I sort of, you know, I pride myself in, um, 
or I push myself rather, to try and cover games that you may not have heard before. And with arcade games, I have a wealth of games that so few people have ever played. And what what my goal is, is to basically make you go, oh wow, that looks cool, where can I play this? And hopefully the answer is, oh yeah, there was a port released on uh, the Super Nintendo, or there was a port released on the Dreamcast, or etc. you know? So you would have the opportunity to play some of these games. But there are some that I've always wanted to cover that I just have never had the opportunity. Things like Alien vs. Predator, the Capcom beat-em-up. It's a phenomenal game that I don't think was released anywhere else. So anyways, that's pretty much it guys, so yeah, leave a comment, let me know if this sounds like a good plan, if you're excited for it, um, if you want to see anything else in particular, let me know. If you do like the arcade angle, is there anything in particular you'd like me to uh, cover? If you are, you know, if you'd like me to cover like a multi cade or something like that, uh, just be very specific in what you want, because there are a lot of uh, Chinese products out there, and searching for some of them can be very challenging if I don't have the exact name of what it's called. So that's pretty much it, guys. So I uh, hope, you, uh, hope you're excited for this stuff, and if you're not excited, well, that's cool too. Just leave me a comment and let me know uh, what you'd prefer, what you'd like to see, what, how I can mix up the schedule. I mean, Saturday is Saturday. I'm not going to change that. That's going to keep going. The Dragon Quest thing is going to keep going. It's mainly for the Retro Wednesdays. If you like the content that I've been producing, uh, say, like over the last, uh, what, two or three months, where it's been arcade heavy with the Neo Geo stuff, and now moving into Thomas Wave, and then potentially going into the uh, CPS systems, etc. So let me know. Leave me a comment. And I greatly appreciate it. And always, thank you for uh, checking out Project COE. And uh, we really, really, it means the world to us uh, that you hit that like button and leave a comment and subscribe. It's awesome, guys. So thank you all so much for checking us out. And leave a comment. Let me know how we can keep making you happy. And I guess that's it. So I'll see you all in the next video.